Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Um, so I was so surprised and honestly honored and amazed to receive an email from an author that wanted me to review one of their books. So I was, so of course, um, I was so excited to do it. So this video is not sponsored. So I'm giving you my 100% honest review. All they did was send me this book for free. So let's get into the review. So this author is actually from um, South Africa, I believe. So the title of this book is The Blacksmith and the Dragonfly. And I'm just gonna put this disclaimer out there now if i butcher any of these names or any of these words i am sorry um but a lot of these words are you know from an african language i believe the language is zulu from what i could look up but i'm not positive so don't quote me on that but they are for sure an african language and difficult for me to pronounce but i'll get to that later so anyways the blacksmith and the dragonfly by it's either Rihanna Lau or Rina Lau and Charles Siboto. Illustrated by Christelle Lambertitz. First impressions, I really love this book. I literally just finished reading it and wanted to like just jump straight into the review now that it's fresh in my head. But it's a great book. It's um it it actually probably teaches you I'm not positive so i believe it's a pretty accurate or a good representation of some african cultures um they um challenge some stereotypical gender roles and the, my favorite part is the female character is the person who comes and saves everybody um in the end so quick summary it starts off um about a story of a royal family so there's a king, queen, and there's two princes. There's the king is very, you know, very macho, very manly. He says, you know, we should be always be prepared for war and we need to always be, you know, strong and fighting and tough and, you know, just a very manly man. His youngest son is just like him, very manly man, into being a warrior, into fighting and things like that. And he likes to train and, you know, he trains with his spears and things like that. Then the queen is a queen and the and she likes to sew and make beautiful garments and so does her oldest son who is obviously the heir to the throne because he's the oldest son. Now father has an issue, the king has an issue with um, his oldest son being more sensitive non-violent and um being interested in sewing you know that's where i that's where you first start seeing the chat the um, you know the challenging the typical gender roles or a difference in gender roles because you know typically the men are macho and the women are the ones you know who like to make clothes and are more sensitive and non-violent but this one they're kind of switching it So he goes to find a little witch and the witch turns the oldest son into a dragonfly. The prince starts going through a challenging journey and um, eventually the prince as a dragonfly runs into a woman who is the daughter of a blacksmith. Her father wants her to run the family business and do chores around the house and be prepared to be a wife one day and this girl is not about that she um, she likes to practice fighting she wants to be a warrior and be in the army not a member of the army but the royal guard so that was her dream she wanted to lead the royal guard or fight in the royal guard and be a warrior and be strong and so her father was just not about that so her and her father didn't get along very well. She, so she's, and she's in the forest and she runs into the prince as a dragonfly. They eventually um, become friends until 
the king sends someone to basically kill the prince and just basically squish him because you know he's still a little bug he's still a little dragonfly and she the blacksmith's daughter comes to the rescue and i just got to show you this picture in this book because she looks like a warrior she looks like a bad in this photo okay like give it up to this girl that's actually my favorite picture in this whole book but right there is you know where she is saving the prince from his attacker eventually the queen hears about everything that her husband the king was doing to kind of get rid of their son and she comes in she she comes in right after this battle has gone on and and gets her son and finds the finds the witch to turn him back and sets a special curse on the ones who wronged who wronged her son but one of my favorite parts about the ending is that it doesn't just talk about oh they loved each other and they lived happily ever after it talks about them as a team and how great the dynamics of their relationship work it's like they said she's the warrior she even she's the one who's going to lead the army she's the fighter she's the tough one he's a sensitive one he's the one who's going to listen he's the one who he's still making his beautiful garments and their relationship just works so well so that's pretty much a summary of the story i hope i didn't give too much away but i still want to talk about some other things i loved about this book so I think I mentioned earlier the illustrations and I showed you the cover and the other picture on the inside and I just love the way this book is illustrated. It's almost looks like an animated movie, like stills from an animated movie. I don't know what it is about the way that it's illustrated, but that's the way it looks to me. It looks like it's a still from an animated movie, like a, a Disney movie or something. Two of the things that I think makes this book special is that um it talks about a the type of african culture and it includes words in the african in one of the african languages which again i believe is zulu but i'm not positive so and the reason when i was giving you the whole summary of the story i didn't include the names of any of the characters because because their names are in the african language which are so hard for me to pronounce i love that they're in there because it makes this book that more special and it teaches you you know words in another language and it also doesn't take away from the story because as i was reading I, if i wanted to i could skip over those names and not have an issue understanding the storyline at all which is which is great because for younger readers which this book is made for it's geared for um elementary older older to mid elementary age students it's fine because if they have a hard time under reading those words they can just kind of skip over them without missing any important parts of the story so some words that are in the south african language that are used throughout the book are located in the back of the book so it tells you even though you can figure out through context what the words mean it still gives you a nice little list in the back that tells you what all the words mean So I'm going to do my best to tell you the names of the characters again. I do not speak this language. I'm just going to do the best and I hope I'm not going to embarrass myself too much. Okay, so in the book, the, the king and the queen, they just call the king and the queen. They don't specify their names. The son, the younger son that I talked about earlier, that's very macho and very like his dad, is named, sorry I'm looking down, I'm looking at the book. So his name is Prince Zan Muvula. I think it's Prince Zan or Zan Zan Emuvula or Zan Emuvula. I believe that's how you say. So that's the younger prince. The older prince, so the main character of the story is Prince Siabuela. No, Prince Si Siya. Bu, buel, bulela, Princia Bulela, Princia Bulela, and then we have 
the blacksmith's daughter so the female main female character the warrior in this story her name is Ndiliswa 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 I'm probably doing such an awful job I'm probably butchering these names but yeah those, so those are the character names in the story again they if they're difficult to pronounce you can skip over them um, and completely understand the story just fine so again um, I think this book is great I think I also want to share it with the students in my class right now it's crazy time of year we just got back into school so I'm gonna give them a moment but I'm definitely gonna share this book with my students both my fourth grade and my fifth grade students and see how they like it and I'll definitely give you an update about that I think my students will really love it and I just love the fact that it I just love the fact that it focuses on that women can be the ones that are strong they can fight they can be warriors and they can save the day and men can be more sensitive can be better listeners and can be into things like sewing and making clothing i feel like that's even more significant than the female role in this story because oftentimes it tells little boys that they can't be interested in like things like that which is an issue yeah that's pretty much all i got to say i give this book like two thumbs up i think the kids will too so i can't wait to share with them so i will put some links down below they have a Facebook group for this book that I'll put that I'll link down below and also um, I'm not I don't think this book is available yet but I'll definitely link it down below if it is and whenever it does come available I will go ahead and link that in the description so anyways that's it for my book review I really hope you enjoyed if you did, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to see more videos like this. I also do vlogs and once in a while I'll do teacher videos and lifestyle videos here and there. But anyways, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.